Hello, Startup Vision. My name is Farah Nuri. I'm the founding managing director of Land Capital, which is the venture arm of Land Research. Hello, Farah, and thank you so much for being with us today on Startup Vision TV. Uh, so, Lam Capital has a very high level investment policy focused on innovation. Your portfolio mm -hmm. is in semiconductors, AI, chips, and industry 4.0. Anything, in fact, that we currently have or will have in our devices is, is of interest uh, to you. So, can you tell us the story behind this? Yeah, well, um, LAM Capital is the venture arm of LAM Research, which is a semi-capital equipment company. What that means is that any semiconductor microchip that we use in our lives, like our laptops, our phones, anything has touched our tools. We're, we're not a household name, but we are that foundational company that is makes the chips that make the information age, all this data and AI possible um, in our lives. So LAM Capital was then born to bring a lot of these innovations that are happening outside of the company back to the mothership. So as a, as a semiconductor, company, we live on the bleeding edge of the technology, but we know things are moving so fast that we can't, no one company can keep up with the, all the changes that are happening in the world now. So our job as Land Capital is to go and access those innovations outside the company and bring them back into the, into the mother company. So why do you prefer to do early stage investments? You know, for um, our value to the company is accessing strategic innovation. And we find that we are more influential and have more impact and influence in the life of a startup when it's very early stage. Because we're not as motivated, although we do have a lot of financial goals, we're not as motivated by just making money as we are by having an impact and bringing innovation back. So our influence and impact is the largest at that early stage. But officially we're stage agnostic. We, it just so happens that we're often engaging at that very early stage. So what is a transformative technology for you and for someone like you who lives every day in the new tech evolution or revolution? How do you see the future? A transformative technology for us is a technology that really changes the way we do our business. That can be in the way we design our tools or that it can be um, digital transforming to digital manufacturing. Um, for example, actually, I would I like to share that one of our companies, which was a 3D printing company, announced that they're doing IPO yesterday. Mm -hmm. So we're very proud of them. And what they do through their it's a completely different way of designing parts. And these are physical parts and building them in a way that you can't do today. So these are parts that are, you know, machined is in a different way that is possible today. So you can make, um, make equipment in a way that wasn't possible before. So those are transformative in the way that we, or it can be in the way we um, support our companies, support our customers, for example, through AR, VR, instead of in-person visits, particularly during COVID, we found that you can establish relationship with our customer companies through, you know, and support tools through VR and AR. So, so it's, it's just, doing business completely differently than it's done today. 
Yeah, definitely. And uh, coming back to microchips or microprocessors, I mean, the world is lacking uh, of those components right now. How, how do you see this crisis and how do you think somebody like you, the, the, com the companies you have in your portfolio can make these like bad memories and it won't happen again? What's the Well, you know, this is actually, this is a huge, um, impact in our industry and it's, you know, these shortages and, and the chip industry is so fundamental to everything we do to enabling the information age, the data age, the day, age of AI, that there's a lot of geopolitics is involved too. And some of these, you know, there is a, there is a nationalism um, that's coming into play as the, you know, between China, uh, US, um, some of the Asian companies and the supply chain and uh, policies getting involved is impacting policies. So coming out of it is, is not necessarily smooth, you know, as the, and, and the content of semiconductors in a, in a car is like we use thousands of uh, microchips in a car. Um, so the contents keeps going up. And um, so I'm not sure there is a there is a quick solution to these shortages that we're seeing today, especially given the complexity of geopolitics around it. Um, so yeah, so we'll have to navigate that. <laughs> and back to your question that I didn't answer about how I see the future, um, you know, as we invest in these um, tools that are transforming the way we um, work, um, all the human machine interfaces that are changing around us and change the way we interact with machines, um, you know, from industrial stage where we have equipment intelligence into our homes, you know, that um, we will be talking to our cars and our tools and our washing machines and everything, you know. So I think a lot of the change that I see coming is gonna be in this human machine interface, which currently is quite kludgy That's as we right. interact with anyone who has talked to Alexa and Siri knows that they're not that, that's smooth yet. <laughs> Very interesting, the future you're, you're promising us. So you're an engineer and also a business person, and you're very involved in giving back through the universities you attended. Uh, you're on the board of the University of Boulder, Colorado. You are also a mentor for the Stanford Ignite program. Transmission, education, and helping young entrepreneurs develop their ideas seems very important to you. Uh, why? You know, and actually, uh, speaking of University of Colorado, shout out to Boulder. And as you know, with all the things that happened in Boulder, I've been, Boulder has been on my mind as my first home when I came to the US. And it's always, so this has been hitting home. Um, but to answer your question, um, both University of Colorado and Stanford, which are my alma mater, I've been very involved with. And truly it's because I love interacting with the millennials and Gen Z population because I learn so much from them every time I interact with them. Um, it's they have a different way of thinking about innovation, different way of thinking about the future and um, which is quite refreshing. And um, hopefully I think I can bring something to the table in terms of how to take their innovations to the marketplace. That's where I have some experience, but um, selfishly, I learned so much when I interact and I get so energized by it when I interact with the young entrepreneurs. And it's always, always just brilliant ideas that they have. And um, so it's very rewarding for me if I can help bring those, those ideas towards to marketplace or uh, to, you know, maturity. 
Yes, and I, it's so refreshing to hear that from you, and I'm sure they love to have you as a mentor and as a help to develop their, their ideas. Thank you so much, Farhan, for sharing. Thank you, Florence. It's been a pleasure talking to you in Startup Vision. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.